Ladies and gentlemen, happy Hanukkah. I'm Marilyn Fox. I'm the Artistic Director of Pacific Resident Theatre. And today we're presenting, for your enjoyment, Forgotten Souls by David Pinsky in celebration of Hanukkah. This play, written in 1916 by this celebrated Yiddish writer, um, certainly qualifies under our mission statement, which is uh, to produce not only the great plays, of known plays in literature, but the forgotten plays of great writers and, of course, new plays. And this certainly is a forgotten play. I don't think it's been produced in the United States uh, barely at all. It only runs about 15 minutes long, and it is, I would say, uh, Chekhovian in its nature, in its exploration of the human soul. And uh, David Pinsky was known for his boldness in examining human desire, uh, longing, sexuality. And, um, and this play touches on those subjects and many more in its short 15 minutes. Um, a little history about the way this production happened. In 2020, a group of artistic directors in Los Angeles got together to um, put on a digital film festival of one acts, one act uh, plays from the theater. And we chose Forgotten Souls. It was done with a new, techno new technology called OBS Ninja which is a version of Zoom, I think, uh, that would be the way to describe it. But what makes it unique is that it allows actors who are all in their separate homes to look as if they're together in the same space. And um, it, it, th at the time we did it, uh, it, it was really in its infancy. Uh, it was in the very beginnings of using this, this, um, this technology. Um, and we did it very quickly. We had a very short amount of time to put it together, but it was thrilling. And um, we got to work on this beautiful little play. And now we get to present it to you um, in its raw form, but certainly um, uh, a, 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 a heartfelt uh, event. And we have the marvelous cast, uh, Dana Dewey's Jackson, Leo Marks, and uh, Dahlia Vasilius, all of whom are PRT members and, um, and lent their, their prodigious talents to this piece. Um, we, we, we only uh, hope that you will join us afterwards for um, a Zoom party. Uh, we'll send you that link to, uh, to get onto the Zoom party and we'll light the menorah and have a little um, celebration together and talk about the play and answer questions and we hope you'll join us for that. Um, we're embarking now on our um, annual donation drive uh, and, and this is the time right before we will reopen and, uh, and we're so thrilled that you're here. We're so thrilled that um, we're getting to share this with you and happy, happy Hanukkah. We'll see you after the show. Thank you. But this is an actual proposal of marriage. Penny, my dear. Did you understand it that way too? How can it be interpreted otherwise? My drama has been accepted and will be produced this very winter. The conditions of the contract are first rate and the director promises me a great success and incidentally, a great reputation. And now I hope better days are in store for us. Happiness of such a nature that you cannot be indifferent to it. It's a bit veiled, but it's plain talk just the same. My darling so, Fanny, my dear. So that's the way you understand it too? My dear Fanny, how happy I am. 
And now I know how I will play at the Ginsburg tonight. I will put my whole soul into the music and it will be the merriest, cheeriest soul that ever lived in the whole world. My faithful friend, at last, my dream has come true. Your dream. I dreamed for you a hero before whom the world would bear its head, a genius, a superman such as only you deserve. Shh, don't talk like that. No, no. As long as I shall live, I will never cease admiring you. Why, you have never given a thought to yourself, never a, a, a look, but have worked with might and main to make a somebody out of your sister. I simply couldn't understand how things went on. You were working yourself to death. Yes, but that was my happiness. And now I'm amply repaid to see Olga placed upon an independent footing for the great future as a painter. I dreamed for you a different kind of happiness, of loving and being loved. When my mother died, I had to be to my sister both a father and a mother. My purpose was great and holy to me. I determined to tear out to uproot from my heart every longing. But you loved Berman all the time, didn't you? Yes. I loved him all the time, but I fought my feelings. And furthermore, I tried to convince myself that his daily visits here were not intended for me, but, but they were intended for his friend and nephew Hindis who were born with me. And I sought to deceive myself that I was a, a dried up twig on the tree of life. My, how you have sinned against yourself. But now the sap and strength flows within me. Ah, oh, life, life, to enjoy it, to feel it in every pulse beat. Oh, Lizzie, play me a triumphal march, a song of joy, of jubilation. So that the very vows will dance and the heavens in join in the chorus. Joy thou daughter, God is mortal. Shh, shh, Indies is coming. Oh, don't say a word to him about it. I will. He must know it. He must be happy to hear it too. And if he truly loves you, he will be happy to learn it. No, no, no. Don't be so inconsiderate. Leave it to me. Hindis, Hindis. Good evening. What's the news? Come here. Quick. Fanny. Well, won't you give me time to carry my parcels into my room? Not even a second. Fanny, have an apple. Let me speak, won't you? Won't Fanny you ha at least give me time to sit down? Fanny has received a letter from Berman. Yeah, saying that his drama has been received. I too have received a letter from Berman. That's nothing. He is seeking to make a match with her. He has practically proposed to her. Practically proposed? Defending. Yes. And when she comes back, you see to it that you wish her congratulations and that you help her celebrate you here. Now, good night to you. I'm off to the Ginsburgs. Joy, thou God is back. But, but, but the, the, the devil, Miss Alec. I haven't a single moment to spare for the devil. What mockery is this? Good evening, Hindis. Good evening. Miss Siegel, uh, could you uh, permit me to see Berman's letter? Well, that's a bit indiscreet. Not at all like a cavalier. Would you permit me to see Berman's letter? Read it, if that's how you feel. Uh, so... 
So, <laughs> to be such an idiot, to be such an idiot. Who? Uh, not I. <laughs> Don't talk it so badly. You make me very sad. I'm going to my room, so you won't see me. Oh, don't speak to me that way, Hindus. Be my good friend as you always were, and be, be good to Berman, for you know between us there could never have been anything more than friendship. There is no need of you telling me that. I know what I know, and I have no fault to find with you. Then why are you so upset, and why do you have approach yourself? You know, Miss Siegel, what my feelings are toward you. And you know that I wish you all happiness. I assure you that I would bury deep within me all my grief and all my, my longing and would rejoice with a full heart. If things were as you understood them from Berman's letter, as I understood them from Berman's letter? Berman did not mean you. Not me? Not you, but your sister. <gasps> he writes me that his first meeting with her was as if the splendor of God had suddenly shone down upon him. That, uh, he gradually, he was filled with a fiery passion that he hopes his love for her is returned. Oh. You have good reason to weep, but not to harm yourself. She has taken from me everything. My ambition to study, my youth, my fondest hopes are now. And now nothing. As you see, Berman never loved you. If it hadn't been for that unfortunate, ambiguous, absolutely botched, simply idiotic sentence. Hindus, I no longer care to live. Folly. My soul is empty. Doesn't this run my life where I can live no longer? Nonsense. I know what I am talking about and I know what I must do. You're thinking now over what death you shall choose. Hmm? Let me tell you a story. There was once upon a time a man who not through doubt and misfortune, but rather through good times and the pleasures came to the conclusion that life wasn't worth living. And so he went off to buy a revolver. Well, on his way, a great clamor arose in the street. A house had caught fire and in a moment was in flames. Suddenly, at one of the windows in the top story, there appeared a woman. But the firemen had placed their highest ladder against the building, and now a man began to climb up. Well, that man was none other than our candidate for suicide. He took the woman out of the window and gave her to the fireman who followed him up, then ran through the window into the house. Well, flames already appeared at the window, and people were sure that the hero had burned to death inside, but he had not burned. In a moment, he appeared on the roof with a small child in his arms. Well, the ladders could not reach to this height, so the fireman threw him a rope. He took the rope, tied it about the child, and lowered it to the fireman below. But he himself was beyond rescue. He folded his hands over his heart, and tears trickled from his eyes. He who but a moment before had sought death now desired not to die. No, he wanted to live. For in that moment, he had found 
a purpose to live and to do good. To do good? I'm tired of doing good. Don't sin against yourself, Fanny. Oh, to do good? I have done good. I have lived for others, not for myself. And now you can see I have not fulfilled my life. I am as miserable as the most wretched, as the most wicked, and I long for death even as the most unhappy. Does Olga know of your feelings toward Berman? I, I don't know what she knows. I wrote a letter full of Berman. I have a notion that if you were to do what you have in your mind at present, a thing I cannot bring myself to name, that Olga would not accept Berman's love, rather, she would take her own life, since she would look upon herself as the cause of your death. No, what's this she thought up? Just what you heard. And, and you mean, oh, first she takes away my life, now she will not let me die. Bear spoke the true Fanny, the Fanny of your Well, may you weep. Weep, Fanny, weep until the tears come no more. But when that is over, dry your eyes and never weep again. Dry forever the source of all your tears. That's exactly what I did. You understand? Such people as you and I, robbed of personal happiness, must either weep forever or never weep at all. I choose the latter course. Such a botched, idiotic sentence. And he's a poet. Kindred, things for us, you say. Then Olga will in any case go Jack Berman. She will imagine that she is taking him away from me in such a thing she would never do. Perhaps. We must think it over. Eh. Kindies. What? I have an idea. Good. But I need your aid. Count on me, if I may. Do you promise? Blindly. Blindly. Why must I promise blindly? If I'm able, you may be sure I'll help. Take me. Marry me. If I should marry, Olga would not have any obstacle in her way. Miss Siegel, <laughs> I have loved you. I still do. But I refuse to be the altar upon which you shall sacrifice yourself. But a moment ago you dissuaded me from death. Will you now drive me back to it? He says that we'll be able to find happiness without burning. But what about if she loves him? Then she'll suffer, just as we do. No! Olga must not suffer, do you hear? I'll not have it. Uh, that's very nice of you. Henry, I no longer know you. Good night. Miss Siegel, why is it that during all the time I have boarded with you that I have made no declaration of love, that I have never proposed marriage? I'll tell you, wasn't it because I knew you didn't love me? And I wanted your love, not merely your respect. No, you did propose because you knew I would refuse you. I suppose I expected, yes. Then you would have proposed. I'd uh, married you without your love. 
Yes. But then I didn't know that you loved another. The other no longer exists for me. In this... Yes? Come near to me. I'm lame. Put all your bundles aside. Everything, everything. Don't be ashamed. Say just what you mean. Lay aside the clutch too. Hindi, you know how highly I esteem you? How happy I am to possess in you a good, true friend. Embrace me. Give me a kiss. A hot, passionate kiss. Put into it your whole love. Make it express your whole, true soul. I tell you, our life will be happy. We souls, forgotten by happiness, will yet find it in our own way, as best we can. You'll see how it will soon be. Lizzie will come home and she'll play us a march of jubilation, a march of joy. And I'll dance, I tell you. I'll dance for two, and I'll sing. I'll turn things upside down. Candice, kiss me hotly, hotly. You.